Hello the Dragon Ball Infinity, I am your DBI admin Eichenbahn, and this is another roleplay review, uh, this time for The Hope and the Departure by Rizian, uh, for his character Nova. Um, this is the continuation and the final chapter of The Last Cyharden, or, well, the, the, final, the final part of chapter one is, uh, I think, the way that he would like to describe it. Um, and we're going to get right into it with The Hope. Um, really liked The Hope. It was uh, it was well written. Uh, it's a very it's very encapsulated scene with Kwai kind of uh, you know like assessing the damage of what's been done both to his fortunes and uh, to like his his sense of purpose and belonging here on Nig Yellow. And uh, with this is it's been a little while since we've talked about this uh, this arc, so uh, I'm gonna have to remind you that Nova has just had her fight in Mian Fair. Uh, which I think it's maybe the way to say it, Mian Far or Mian Fair, um, which is kind of a, a giant like pro wrestling, uh, sort of like an ascended wrestling ring on Nigello, and um, she lost uh, terribly and was you know beaten to near death, um, with uh, you know her face is all matted up, broken, you know like the the skin torn like. The, you know, the description, when we see Kwai kind of, like, unwrapping her, it's almost like a corpse that he's, you know, pulling the cloth off of. Um, but having, you know, taken stock of everything that he has lost in gambling and betting on Nova, um, the scene opens with Kwai, like, getting ready to just strangle her to death. Like, he's just gonna finish her off. Like, he's gonna kill her, and then he's probably gonna kill himself, is what is kind of alluded to. Um, before Sun Yu and uh, Jorik... Uh, enter the room and start to basically bargain for her life. Um, now, there's a few, there's a few little mysteries that are alluded to here that we'll kind of touch on a little bit in the departure in a moment. Where Sunyu has been called to this planet, called Nigello, and has been here for it sounds about like nine months to a year, on the behest of of Jorik or Odin, um, and. It, he's he's preparing to leave, but he's going to take this Saiyan woman with him. And so he manages to convince Kwai with quite a bit of Isirian gold um, that uh, you know to to let him take Nova. He'll he's going to take her to Kaiose, and then he's going to uh, and, and he'll he'll train Nova for I think a period of about three years is what he they kind of agree on. He'll pay Kwai for that time, and then he'll return Nova to Kwai, and they will. Uh, it, you know, assuming that's what she wants to do, and then, uh, you know, he's he's almost paying for the privilege to train this student. Um, one kind of question I had for this one, and maybe it was answered in the log before. Again, it's been so long since I've read this one that I'm not sure if some of some of my questions and some of my some of the things that I'm going to talk about were have been gone over and I've just forgotten them. But the kind of question in the back of my head is like, really, like. And no offense to Nova, no offense to her, but I don't think it's ever really explained why Sun Yu decides that Nova's the one. Um, like, there is there is a moment when he's, like, in the room where he say, says that there's kind of this oppressive force of dough that is here, like, that we're, like, Nova's wanting to stay alive and he can just kind of, like, sense that power in the room. And so, like, maybe, maybe there's something, like, inherently that... Uh, like he recognizes it, it seems you know it seems kind of like both he and Kwai realize that there's something special about Nova and there is something special about Nova I just don't know what on earth it, I don't know what on earth really has made it this person and not someone else I think is is what it comes down to like why Nova and not another character why you know like why this one instead of that one um and I was kind of expecting with this log to maybe get a little bit more insight about that. Like a conversation like before Jorik and Sun Yu step in the room where they like where they discuss it. Or in the departure, I was kinda of hoping that they, you know, they discuss why exactly Nova. I'm not saying he made the wrong choice, obviously he made the right one, or or maybe he did, depending on how you look at Nova's story arc. But the uh, the why there, like I was just expecting a little bit more like to go into a little bit more detail about why, because um, uh, you know, in on a planet like Nigello, there's all kinds of fighters. That, you know, like me and Far had plenty of them. Like so, like just wanted I just wanted him to talk about his reasoning, 
uh, a little bit or explain his reasoning just a, just a tiny bit. And again, maybe he did in the last log, it's just been so long I forgot. But uh, Kwai does eventually agree to this, and I'm a little sad to see Kwai leave the story um, because, you know, he's he's been kind of in the background and he is an interesting character and I do like him a lot. I like him a lot better than I like Jorik. Um, and I, you know, I know that he'll come back. I know that he, like, even when Nova's journey started, I think that she was still with Kwai. So I think that this will all circle back eventually. But I am sad to kind of see him going from the main plot. Although I don't know what else he would have to add at this point either. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that's the hope. It's a, it's, it's a good log. I, and it's short, but it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a really, really quiet, sort of somber moment. Uh, it, with you know, with kind of allusions to what the some of the mysteries that were going to go going on, um, and I think overall it, it's pretty good. Um, but then we get to the departure, and I want to say up front, uh, I like the beginning of the departure, but by the end of it, I have no idea what is happening, um, and I there's a part of me that even wants to say that. I feel like maybe this one should be redone a little bit. Um, it's not my favorite log. I, I really don't understand some parts of it. But the departure takes place right after the Hope. Uh, they have... Uh, Jorik and Sun Yu have gathered Nova's body. They're in this like van. They're driving down to the spaceport with the intention of leaving to Kaiose. And there's an argument that breaks out between Sun Yu and Jorik. Where, uh, J you know, Jorik is like, you know... You, I. I brought you here for a mission to do something, and uh, Sun Yu explains that he's just been out there in the frozen icy waste for like nine months, has no idea what he's protecting or what he's doing, and that his blessing is ending, that his, you know, his 500 years of, you know, eternal life is starting to wear out, like there's only so much more time left for him, and he, like, he says specifically, like, I, you know, I should have been looking for students, I should have been training the next Sai Harden, and I put that off. I've watched, you know, like generations of my family grow up and grow old and die. And I've like gone into kind of complete solitude at this point. This is what I should have been doing all the time. And I don't have much more time left. Like I'm taking this girl and someone else to Kayose and I'm going to train them to be Psy Hardens. <coughs> and this is where we get into what I would call the, the backstory... <coughs> Uh, the backstory mystery overload, because uh, once they get to the spaceport, a lot of shit starts happening really fast, and unlike most of the other parts of the last Sci Harden, um, in like in this, it, it happens too fast, and it's written in a way that like I like I thought posts were missing, like I, I wasn't, I, it felt like there was paragraphs missing to explain some of this, but once they get to the sp the spaceport, there is another character, a uh, person wearing a white mask and, like, a cloak, um, very, like, Obito or, uh, I forget the character from Naruto, like that g guy with the orange mask or whatever that shows up, um, and I think they're an android, I don't know, something really weird happens when Jorik and this character come into, like, contact, um, I believe that their name is Edu, uh, which... Jorik says that in Iserian means formless memory, um, but something really weird happens when those two touch. I don't know what's going on with Jorik at this point. Like he's sweating and like coughing and like uh, just, I mean, just acting very strangely. Then there's this like this fusion thing that goes on, and they both kind of pass out, and then uh, and then Odin's paladins are coming to like attack them. I think at some point Jorik even gets shot, and, like, he's saying, like, you know, why did you release this person, and, like, I don't know, there, there's just too much going on there, there's too many questions all at once, and it's not written with the same, like, the same carefulness and the same, uh, like, the same detail as the rest of The Last I Harden. Like, it, it's, like, bam, 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 and there's, like, honestly, again, I, I thought that there was post missing. Um, if, if I'm being, if I'm being really honest about it, I didn't like it. Um, I, I think that you, it felt rushed and it kind of felt like you were trying to introduce like a lot of these new concepts all at once 
for the you know like for the le like in the next chapter you'll find you know you'll all these questions will be answered and more on Dragon Ball Infinity kind of thing, but it, it's just it felt like too much all at once, um, for for the story to conclude in a way that felt satisfying, um, and and again I just feel like it it came with like a a rushed necessity that the rest of this story has not had like like almost like you. It, like, you were trying to... You, I think that you were even going for that. I, I want to make it clear. I think that this was something you were trying to do. I do think that you were trying to pile on some stuff so that the next chapter opens with these questions. Like, and I get that. But it, it really just felt like a, a very different storytelling style that doesn't match the, the rest of the time and patience that you've used to build up these scenes and these characters. You know, like, this, this new character gets introduced immediately with, like, you know, no, like... I don't know, like, we get a good description of them, and they are the one who kind of blasts off the spaceship um, and gets them the hell out of there, like, manually drives it off of the dome while, you know, Odin's paladins are after them. But, um, I don't know. I, I gotta say, I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, and I just think that, I think that a little bit more time could have been used to set these things up. And I, and I hate to kind of say it this way, but, like, it's fine to have all these kinds of mysteries and these unanswered questions, you know. I just think that there's a certain kind of pacing that's missing with them. Um, like, just the girl alone, The, the again, I think maybe she's an android, I don't know. Um, just, like, you could have ended with just, you know, Jork being shocked that it's her and you know, just leave that you know, leave that as the one mystery without the stuff of whatever was going on when they touched, when Jorik and her touched, and 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 then the and then the very very quick, uh, I mean the the escape itself. Like I just I feel like a a little bit like I feel like a lot more detail could have been put into Odin's paladins arriving. Odin, you know, like the the danger, the threat there, because we're. I mean, we're literally talking about, like, the last Sci Harden right now. Like, we got Sun Yu right here. Like, why is he afraid of these, like, these goons in armor? Like, he could massacre them, most likely. Um, so, like, I, I just don't understand the... I don't understand what the necessity was to get away so fast. Like, I'm pretty sure Sun Yu could have soloed that whole base. Maybe he couldn't. Maybe maybe part of the blessing wearing off is that, like, his, he's running, like, you know, his... He's running out of chakra or running out of uh, chi or something, and once like once he uses it, like he'll be dead, kind of like, um, kind of like Goku going SSJ three or whatever while he's got the halo, and you know, like once his energy is up, he has to go back to the other world, kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know, um, but it just just felt rushed. I didn't understand the emergency at the end. Uh, too many, like a lot of questions there that don't get answered and I don't think we're given the like the time necessary to build them up to that factor and it feels like we've been waiting on a lot of questions already if, if you've been keeping up with this arc like you know it's you know, you're just getting little breadcrumbs of what's going on it's like I still don't know after chapter one is completely done after you know a literal years have gone by I still don't know what Sun Yu was doing on Nick Yellow like I'm no closer to understanding that than I was two years ago. Um, and it's a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating that we're adding more things before we've even answered the the, the things that have been going on since the very beginning. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, that I, I really like this chapter. This is a great little story. I'm excited to kind of see it go on. Uh, I just think that you you do owe the audience like some some actual answers for for some of these things. You you do have to eventually tell us what the hell is going on um, because <laughs> it's been a, uh, those of us that have been reading it have been waiting a long time and we're still still waiting. Um, anyway, uh, I am your DBI admin Iconbon, and this was Roleplay Review.